Oh, okay. So it's really hard for me to move around right now because I just ate like a ton of oatmeal. Yeah, oatmeal. Gonna make fun of me now? This is life when you live alone. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of oatmeal. There's a lot of craft dinner. There's a lot of spaghetti, pizza, video games, movies. It's actually pretty sweet. So right away, real quick, I just want to give a shout out and a big thanks to all of you who have been on the Facebook page and posting and giving me all your support. You know, I really appreciate it, and I will drink to that. Anyways, I have to say that sequels can be hard to do, especially when the first film in the series is so successful. Not to say that there haven't been great sequels in the past, but Speed 2 is definitely one of those sequels that probably shouldn't have been made. But even through the ridiculous plot and the terrible dialogue, there, there is some good stuff in here. First of all, I personally think that Sandra Bullock is incredibly beautiful. I mean, I think that she's just as hot now than when she did this movie 15 years ago. And there is a scene in here where she is totally sans bra. And for all of you who don't know, that's French for she's not wearing a bra, I think. I had to learn French in school for like nine years. I still don't know a f***ing word of it. And I don't care. Also, Willem Dafoe's in this movie, which is pretty awesome. Because, I mean, whenever you cast Willem Dafoe as the villain, he's gonna knock it out of the park. I mean, he doesn't even have to say anything. Just look at him. Another interesting thing is that Gary Oldman actually turned down that role so that he could do Air Force One, which is probably a better career choice. And Keanu Reeves turned down the $12 million to reprise his role in this movie to do nothing, which was probably a better career choice. I'm just kidding, he did The uh, Devil's Advocate, which is a cool movie, but you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the ending, but that's another story. Let's just take a look at the poster for Speed 2. My buddy Brad over at Crave Online mentioned a few things to me about this poster, which made me realize how incredibly misleading it actually is. So number one, the boat never explodes in this movie. I mean, there's small explosions inside the ship, but nothing even remotely close to this degree, which is actually kind of disappointing because having the boat explode would have probably made this movie better. And Siskel and Ebert gave this movie two thumbs up? What the f***? At first I didn't believe it. I actually had to check it out and sure enough, it's actually true. In fact, not only are Siskel and Ebert's reviews the only positive ones I could find for this movie, but Roger Ebert actually gave this movie a three out of four star rating. So anyways, this movie starts off with Sandra Bullock and her boyfriend Alex going on this cruise. Willem Dafoe manages to sneak aboard some smoke bombs and detonators disguised as golf clubs and golf balls. And while I do think it's a little creative, I think that like a golf bag full of golf clubs would be a little bulky to carry around. And right from the get go, I gotta bring up this part of the movie that just really pisses me off. There's this deaf girl on the cruise and her dad is just being a complete asshole to her the whole time. Telling her to stop dancing to the music she can't hear, telling her she looks like a clown. Let her have a little fun. She's a deaf child on a cruise with a bunch of adults. How insanely bored would you be? And it's 1997, so there's no like smartphones or iPads to use for entertainment. So then Willem Dafoe kills the captain of the ship and probably one of the most avoidable deaths of all time. There's this light that's attached to the railing on the side of the boat and Willem just keeps swinging it, trying to hit the guy. So the captain just keeps leaning back, but then he just leans in again. Leaning back, leaning in, leaning back, leaning in. Finally, instead of just moving to the side or just, you know, walking away, he leans in so far that Willem is able to hit him with the light and then throw him overboard. So then Willem hacks into the computer system and shuts down the engines and then tells the first officer to evacuate the whole ship. And I don't know what this guy is capable of. What guy? Yeah, what guy? So then Willem is able to go down into the ship's vault and steal a bunch of diamonds. Then Alex and Sandra get kind of split up and Willem puts like a grenade on the door so that he can't get out. So now the ship's on course to like smash into this oil tanker, but it just sideswipes it. And then we get to the best part of this movie. The ship actually crashes onto the coast of St. Martin and everything about this sequence is just hilarious and awesome. 
from the sheer disaster of it to the ridiculous reactions of the bystanders. So Willem just kidnaps Sandra and gets on a plane, but luckily Alex just suddenly turns into James Bond and hooks onto the plane with a harpoon gun. And you think this would all be leading up to some kind of like epic fight between the two of them, but it doesn't. Instead, Willem Dafoe's character turns into kind of like Wily e. Coyote. <laughs> So then there's this big explosion and Alex decides that this is probably the appropriate time to give Sandra a ring. And then he asks her, do you want to wear this for a while? But it makes sense, you know, I mean, like, she's a beautiful girl, he's the hero. They're perfect for each other. I mean, there's no way she'd end up just wasting her time with a complete dirtbag. <laughs> All right. Never drink before doing a show, and then drink during the show. Okay, come on. Come on, Mark. So, Willem kidnaps Sandra and gets away up. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't have drank that, man. Okay, all right, come on. Not the bees, not the bees. By the way, thumbs up if you're excited for this shit.